You're watching me thanks to some good old-fashioned analog TV technology. This technology, however, is being threatened. And if you don't make upgrades to your TV set, this might be all you'll be seeing. Hello and welcome to Tech Report. Analog TV is a standard that's been with us since TV's conception in the early 1950s. However, it's gradually being replaced by a newer, better technology, digital. Fortunately, there is a way you can keep your existing antenna installation and be able to watch free, over-the-air television. Here now is my report. Television has seen many changes throughout its 60-year history. There was the addition of UHF channels, then the big switch to color, and finally the removal of some UHF channels. There's no doubt about it. The television signals we have today barely resemble those first broadcasts of the late 1940s. One thing has remained the same, however. The signals that are sent to our TV sets behave exactly the same as they did during television's early years. NTSC, or the National Television System Committee, is the method that has remained unchanged all these decades. Thanks to high-definition television and newer digital technologies, NTSC systems have been rendered obsolete. In fact, a movement exists to remove them from the air entirely. In the United States, all NTSC transmitters must be turned off by February of 2009. The main reason behind this movement is that analog TV stations are airwave hogs. Currently, television stations take up a huge 408 megahertz of space, space that could, in theory at least, be used for other services. So, what does this mean to the average TV viewer who has a classic rooftop antenna, or so-called rabbit ears? Well, at first it would appear as if you are out of luck. No more free TV. Time to get hooked up into cable or satellite services. Well, that's not entirely true. The NTSC system is merely being replaced by a newer digital technology. ATSC, or the Advanced Television Systems Committee, uh, is a new technology which takes up far less space on the airwaves. And best of all, it delivers a sharper, and in some areas, even a high-definition picture. High-definition TV? Available for free? It seems almost too good to be true, right? And indeed, there is a catch. Because the change involves a different type of signal transmission, your old TV will not be able to receive these new signals. If you don't have a new TV, or don't have any plans to upgrade anytime soon, there is an alternative. DTV converter boxes are sold at many electronic stores in the United States, and if you're an American citizen, you can get a $40 coupon from the FCC. In Canada and the United States alone, there are an estimated 30 to 40 million users who still use the analog over-the-air system. Each one of these households will have to make an upgrade to their existing TV system, or sites such as this could become rarer and rarer. For INET, this is Christopher reporting. My report there. Now on Tech Report, we're going to show you how to set up your very own digital over-the-air antenna system so you too can get free high definition. As you can see, we're joined by Kyle, live, thanks to analog TV technology. Now the audio part of this system is not quite working yet, so we've got good old-fashioned two-way radio so we can contact him. So, Kyle, what's the weather like for antenna making? Well, it's not bad. It's kind of cloudy right now, though, and a bit windy and cold, so I wouldn't exactly advise it uh, for today. But fortunately enough, we pre-recorded us setting up an antenna earlier this week. Get the footage now. Hello, and welcome to the top of my roof, or as I like to call it, Antenna Making Central. Well, as you can see, there's not too many antennas around here, so I'm going to get the camera to follow me, if you would, while I go over to where my antennas are, right over here. Now, you might be wondering why they're at the edge of my roof kind of thing. Well, that's because my parents won't let me put them near the center, but that's okay. This serves my purpose well. So probably what you're seeing here, if my cameraman is as good as they say he is, you've got a, uh, you should be seeing a pipe and antennas mounted on that. Now this pipe goes uh, straight down about 20 feet, 24 feet, into the ground where it's uh, cemented in place with concrete. Um, it's actually really secure. Might not look it from up here, but it's really, it's really stable. It's not being taken out in the windstorm. So anyway, um, I'm gonna explain a bit now about what this setup is all about. Up at the very top, you see, that uh, antenna has nothing to do with digital television. 
That's called a disco antenna, and it covers uh, VHF radio bands, because I'm also a ham radio operator. So it's uh, for talking to people on local repeaters and stuff. This beast right here, this is uh, my antenna that I use for DTV. Now right now it's aimed off approximately to the north, uh, northeast. Uh, it's aimed for Vancouver, which is where I'm receiving my digital signals from. Now, when you're purchasing an antenna, you're probably not going to need something as big as this. I've actually measured it. It's about 15 feet long. It cost me 200 bucks from Radio Shack, and as a matter of fact, they don't even sell it anymore. I bought it about three years ago. This does bring me uh, to come to an interesting point, though. Most analog TV antennas, as long as they can receive UHF, um, should be able to work for digital. So you probably won't even need to uh, upgrade your existing antenna system. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, you probably don't need something quite this big if you're living in a city. This is more for receiving signals uh, from far away distances. If you're in a city, you might want something more like this. As you can see, it's a hell of a lot smaller. And uh, what this could do is, for example, it could just fit onto like a vent pipe. It would have a little bit of a mast, clamp onto that, and you'd run a wire down into your TV setup. This has got a pretty good receiver for analog. I haven't tried it for digital. But it's, uh, I would imagine it's pretty good. It's uh, one of these goes for about a hundred bucks. Um, so pretty reasonable when you're thinking of replacing, getting high definition for free instead of having to pay a monthly cable bill. Well, that's all about, that's about all we've got uh, for up here on the roof. So now I guess we're gonna head back downstairs and I'll show you my setup inside. All right, well, this is the setup I've got inside our uh, newsroom, so to speak. Um, I've just got, uh, Bellingham TV station up on the TV right now, KVOS. Um, this is being received through the digital tuner, which um, you probably saw in my report earlier on in this episode. Um, changing channels on this thing is really easy. You've got a remote control. It's just like changing channels on a regular TV. Oh, that was volume, sorry. Changing channels. And uh, 24.1, that's the uh, shopping channel, also from Bellingham. Um, bring up the signal string computer. I'm getting it about 50%. Uh, which is okay, it's enough to produce a, uh, a picture almost 100% of the time. Uh, but of course it's not aimed for Bellingham, as I said, I've got it aimed for Vancouver. Well, today was kind of a different episode. Today we uh, did some stuff with TV instead of doing computers. We hope you've enjoyed this episode nonetheless. From everyone at iNet, thanks for watching. And remember, to stay hacking. I hope that sounded alright. Let's take a look.